Hey guys, I'm Michelle, what's up, 07. Welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red Leaf Green. Last time, we made our way out of Mount Moon and got ourselves a dome fossil, as well as beating up Gary once more. And we find ourselves on the Nugget Bridge in this part. And of course, I don't know what they do with a bridge like this. Walk across it. People call this the Nugget Bridge. Beat us five trainers and win a fabulous prize. Think you got what it takes? Yeah, actually, you guys are kind of pushovers. So, while we're going up Route 24 here, I think it's only best that we discuss the three new catches you can encounter on this place. Um, hilariously, the first two that you'll likely encounter are the two region, are the two, uh, version-specific Pokemon. They're Oddish and they're Bellsprout. Oddish! Actually pretty good. It's another grass poison type, just like Bulbasaur, because all grass types are part poison in this game, except for one, which we'll get to later. Um, Oddish is pretty decent. It's a three-stage evolution. It becomes Vileplume through a Leaf Stone, so you gotta find one of those to get its final stage. But it's a pretty solid Pokemon. It hits pretty dang hard. It's one downside, I'd say, that it's kind of slow, but after that... Solid choice. If you want to use it, go right ahead. But if you're playing Leaf Green, you don't get that choice. Instead, what you get is Bellsprout. Bellsprout does not have the same defenses. It's a lot faster than Bells than a uh, than a uh, Vile Plume in its final form as Victory Bell. But it also evolves through a Leaf Stone and is instead a mixed attacker, having high physical and special attack. That's kind of neat, but it's not super useful in Generation Three because Grass moves are all special, and I think all Poison type moves are. But it gets better in later generations as a result. I'd say if you're trying to choose between those two and you have both versions, you'd be better off just getting a Vile Plume. Unfortunately, this is also Generation 3 Fire Red Leaf Green, so you can't really get Oddish's alternate evolution, which is Bell Awesome, which you could get in Generation 2 games. Uh, looks like we've got another Kuna. And of course, the thing that our rival had that we encountered earlier was an Abra. Abra is an amazing Pokemon to have if you're willing to train it up a bit. It only knows Teleport when you catch it, so it's a pain in the neck to catch because it will always flee every battle you, you encounter it in. But if you can catch it and train it up to evolve into a Kadabra, it's a strong special attacker. It's super fast. It's got decent special defense. Great choice. Always has been. Only problem is you'll have to trade to get its final evolution. But even without that, Kadabra is still reliable. Alright, next trainer. I'm second. Now it's serious. This is supposed to be serious. I'm sorry to say, Last Alley, but you're not serious. In fact, you don't even scare me. But yeah, this is mostly going to be an easy opportunity to catch up in levels for Spearow here. So hopefully we'll actually get them to evolve into into their next stage, which I'm excited about. And that takes care of you. Oh, look, oh and speak of the devil, you're going to use an Oddish. Nice. So yeah, we can't catch this since we're playing the Leaf Green version. If I could, I probably would have actually, but we already have a Grass Starter, so eh, what else am I going to do? I also didn't use a grass start in my last playthrough of Leaf Green, actually, now that I think about it, but that's besides the point. And, of course, Bell Sprout, just to show off both versions. I don't know why, I always liked the design of Bell Sprout, but I've never used one. Partly because I think there's just a lot of grass poison types early game, so you're probably going to either pick up Bulbasaur, or just, like, look at all of them and go, I don't need a grass type this early. And you kind of don't. You could if you want something useful to fight Misty, but, eh. And level 19 Spiro tries to learn Pursuit. This is a dark move. Dark moves were not in Generation 1, but they were added in Gen 2 onwards. Pursuit is kind of weak, but it does double damage if your opponent is trying to switch out. It's kind of interesting. Uh, we'll get rid of Growl. We got Growl, and we learned Pursuit. How could I lose? Very easily, in fact. I'm a god, as you can clearly tell. <laughs> oh, goodness. Here's number three. I won't be easy. Something weird as well that I've noticed about uh, Nugget Bridge trainers here. They have a decreasing amount of Pokemon per trainer. Oh, you've got a Sandshrew. Oh no, something that is slightly different and actually puts up a bit more of a fight. Whatever, am I going to Ivysaur? But no, really, you should be fine by now. If your Pokemon are not, like, level 15 at the, le at the least by the time you get here, you probably should have been doing more grinding. Because <laughs> like any good RPG, or... Actually, that is not fair to say. I guess it's best when an RPG doesn't make you grind, but sometimes you need to. And in this case, I don't really, because I only got two Pokemon. And now you're going to have Ekans, so that's right back to Spearow. Even if Intimidate will lower my attack, which, honestly, that's like the one good thing I'll give about Arbok and Ekans. They have Intimidate. It's a pretty good ability. Yeah, yeah. Intimidate cuts my attack, whatever. Peck. Even with my attack lower, that doesn't mean much. Ooh, Bite. Bite does cause flinch, but since I go first, I don't gotta worry about that. Flinch can make it so sometimes you'll just, like, stutter and won't be able to attack that turn. Oh, God, rap! 
Ugh. Rapping Generation 1 was awful. That's why we're not playing Generation 1 games. Even if I do like Yellow Virgin. And that takes care of you. Ow! Stop flat. Good. What do you got? Number 4. Getting tired? Oh, I'm getting a bit tired of your dialogue. But that's about it. So you've got Nidorans? Hmm. Uh, we should be fine for a bit. I'm starting to get a little bit dead. Ooh, god damn it. Uh, I forgot about Poison Point. Poison Point's a kind of annoying ability. If you make physical contact with them, there's a chance they'll just get poisoned automatically. That does lower my defense as well as, as slowly drain my health, but I think, yeah, we're going to take you out. And, of course, you got both Nidos, because why wouldn't you? I don't know. I thought about using, like, a Nidoran for my team, but... I... Mm. They just don't really cut, cut it for me. Even Nidoran Girl, which would be kind of nice as a, as a tank, just doesn't really fit the build that I'm looking for for my team. My team's going to be a bit weird this playthrough as well, going for some oddball choices I wouldn't normally use. It was like, full disclosure, my original team in my previous playthrough of this game didn't even use my starter because I was getting bored of them. I think I dropped them for... It was Charmander that I picked, and I dropped him for a Vulpix, and honestly, I had a lot of fun. I know a lot of people don't like using Vulpix, but I don't know, I enjoyed it. Nice change of pace sometimes to just try out Pokemon you never use. Yes, yes, my attack's lower. But you're still dead. That's the important part. I lost two? Yes. You all will lose. I am clearly the best. But first we're gonna go back and heal because poison. And we're back. Alright. Now this gets us right back to trainer number five, who is a camper, I believe. Okay, I'm number five. I'll stomp you. Not really, because you only have one Pokemon, if I remember correctly. Yes, you do, Camper Ethan. You've got a Mankey. Which is surprisingly high level, actually. It's the highest level thing we've encountered so far. But it's also a fighting type. Oh, shit, it survived. Uh-oh. Oh, fuck. Uh-oh. This be okay. Oh, come on! Whew. I was worried he was going to go for the Fiber. But well, since he did not get five times, we're safe. And you're dead. And that takes care of Ethan. Whoa, too much! Yes. Yes, I am. It's a problem I'm trying to stop. <laughs> Congratulations, you beat our five contest trainers. You just earned a fabulous prize. Which, we get a nugget. This is purely a sellable item. It's worth a lot of cash. Just sell it when you get the chance. By the way, how would you like to join Team Rocket? We're, we're a group of professional criminals specializing in Pokemon. Want to join? Are you sure? Well, I didn't say anything, so I don't know. Come on, join us. I'm telling you to join. Okay, you need convincing. I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. So, yeah, we suddenly get a surprise battle with a Team Rocket grunt. Didn't look like one, but uh, that sprite does not lie compared to his overworld sprite. Kind of low on health for this, so I might just switch to Ivysaur. Excuse me, Emperor. I, I'm... <laughs> I really need to start calling him Emperor more seriously, because I keep neglecting to do so. Ugh, stop rapping. I should at least be glad we aren't playing Yellow Virgin, because, like, Yellow Virgin back in the original Game Boy is fine. I enjoy playing that game a bit, but there's some odd quirks with Generation 1's original installments that were just a pain. Especially the original version, because in rap, if you used rap in Gen 1, your opponent physically could not even do anything for, like, four to five turns, and it was always infuriating. Yes, yes, you're poison stinging me while rapping, but I'm part poison, so that doesn't matter. Die! Thank you. I believe... Damn it, not enough. Okay, you got a Zubat? Uh, I can probably deal with that. Ah, it's so close. Yeah, yeah, level 15. You don't scare me. You're a bat. I love you, Zubat, but you're not useful in this generation. Especially when you do that! Yeah. Stupid leech life. Always just annoying. <laughs> Though at least I'm glad I'm not playing Generation 7, where leech life got a sudden, like, huge boost in power. Leech life was always one of the most, like, insignificant damaging moves. But no, in Gen 7, that thing is actually terrifying. It does, like, 70 base power. It's great. Also, ooh, level 20 time. That's a good sign. Arr, you're too good. Oh, no, you are good. But, since we have level 20, Spiro's evolving.
Yes! Spiro has evolved into Firo! Nice. Firo is so much better than the original Spiro. It hits much harder, it's much faster. And Salter's stats do get a slight boost as well. With your ability, you'd become a top leader in Team Rocket. Come on, think of the opportunity. Don't let this chance go to waste. Um, no thanks, I'm good. I really am not interested. But yeah, now Firo is way stronger. Oh, that's good. 40s. I think it's actually... Yeah, that's higher than what Ivysaur has, because this is technically uh, Spiro's final evolution. does not have a third form, unlike um, Bulbasaur. Leave item over here. Yeah, TM45 attract. This is kind of useless to us. Well, maybe, but I don't know. Oh, Route 25. Um, are there new encounters in Route 25? I don't think there are. Uh, let me pause and just check that real fast, actually. By the looks of it, no. We appear to be in the clear on that, so that's good. Let's uh, just want run around the grass real fast, see if we find anything interesting. Eh, not very interesting. <laughs> what are the odds we run into a second shiny Pokemon? I swear to God. I would just, I would just turn the game off at that point. Just be like, nope, going gambling, going to the lottery, playing the slots, doing anything. Because two shiny Pokemon in one playthrough, I'm pretty sure, has never happened. I've heard of it happening in speedruns, actually. I think it was one guy who, what was it? Two shiny Pokemon in a row, or in the same area. Which is pretty nuts. I just got down from Mount Moon, but I've still got gas in the tank. Maybe you should use the bathroom then, bud. But yeah, there's mostly just a lot of trainers around 25 over here. There is some Pokemon that we haven't seen yet, but we can't really encounter them yet. So I'm not going to be discussing them for a while, like Machop here. We'll be talking about him much later. Especially since he's already dead. <laughs> Yes, yes, you got a Geodude, and it's back to Emperor. And of course, with the Almighty Vine Whip, rock types are completely screwed, so you're done. Yeah, thankfully we do have the option to try and avoid some of these trainers. We can't avoid all of them, I believe, but we can avoid a large chunk of them if we're careful. Not this one, though, I guess. Dad took me to a great party on the SSN at Vermilion City. Interesting. Sounds like someone had a party had a party boat. Youngster Dan would like to battle. Sends out a Slowpoke. Ooh, we're actually not going to see these guys for a long time. Slowpoke are kind of hard to come across in this game for your own collection. Now, you'll usually be able to like, see most of them for your Pokedex from trainer battles, but a lot of Pokemon in this game are just not easy to find for yourself. Especially if you've got to do Godforsaken trades for them. Alright, uh, one more Vine Whip should finish you. There we go. Get out of here. I'm not mad. Uh, then why'd you tell me that? Usually, the people who are mad say that they're say that they're not mad. Was I supposed to get cut somewhere, or did I get that later? Oh, I'm trying to think. Oh god, it's, <laughs> I haven't properly done like a, a true playthrough of Fire Red Leaf in quite a while. Like even in my last playthrough, that was about a year ago. Jeez. Picnic or Kelsey? Ooh, that sounds familiar. Shout out to my sister. <laughs> Alright, yes, yes, more Nidorans. Uh, we'll probably cut through most of these battles since we don't really need to see anything here. Most of the Pokemon we've encountered from these guys we've already seen before, so might as well just cut through them. Unless something interesting happens. Hiker Knob, right. I forgot about the trainer names in this game. They're not Pokemon Coliseum levels of legendarily stupid, but they're debatable at times. Who names their kid Knob? <laughs> Oh, hey, level 21 for Firo. That's nice. Actually, I think I just remember what I'm supposed to do here with this camper over here, actually. And as you can tell, because I'm saying the word actually a couple times, it actually means that I know what I'm doing. And or stumbling. This guy. Normally, you need an HM to get past him to get the item up there, but... If you just kite him out this way... I'm a cool guy. I've got a girlfriend. That doesn't make you a cool guy, dude. It means that one person likes you. Camper Flint. But yeah, now he's walked out of the way so we can actually get that item behind him. Kinda nice. Now we just gotta take care of these rats. At least I assume they're both rats. For all I know, you got something else up your sleeve. 
Snake. Okay, I can live with that. That takes care of that. Ah, darn. Not, I don't know many cool people that say, aw, oh, darn. Anyway, what do we get here? TM43, secret power. That was a bit more useful than it was in this generation in uh, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. Oh, crap. I had this feeling. I knew I had to battle you. Well, that's how it works in this game if you look at me. But no, secret power kind of had a better use in Generation 3. It was the thing you used to make secret bases. That's not a feature in this since this is a straight remake of Gen 1, so they didn't feel like adding that. But it would have been interesting to see. Secret power is just a normal move, otherwise it's not very remarkable. I think it can paralyze, but that's about it. Though really, if you're looking to paralyze, you probably just put Stun Spore on your Ivysaur or something instead. <laughs> or maybe you bought a snake and have it use glare, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't judge you. you. Do what you want with your life. I'm not you, and you're not me. Are you me? Don't answer that question, because I already know that I have only one clone. And now that I think about it, no one is going to understand what the hell I'm talking about. Oh, well. Alright, fine whip, finish you off. Youngster Chad. I knew I'd lose, too. That's a pretty unfortunate uh, thing to know. Can I walk past you? I don't think I can. Yeah, I didn't think so. My friend has so many cute Pokemon. I'm so jealous. Then get cute Pokemon. It's not that hard. <laughs> we have technology, lady. Oh, you've got Oddish. Well, this will be easy experience for Firo. Nice try. I'm a Fero, much mightier than a Spiro. An Oddish? Oh, you're definitely dead. Oddish, you're slow. I was a bit worried that we'd be over-leveling uh, Fero here a bit, but we're pretty close to level, and Ivy's was about to get a bunch of experience from the gym, so I think we'll be fine. But anyway, this is Bill's house. And, uh, very clearly a scientist of some sort. Teleporter is displayed on the PC monitor. Impressive. He's got a Clefairy, looks like. Hiya, I'm a Pokemon. Oh, shit. No, I'm not. Call me Bill. I'm a true blue Pokemaniac. Hey, what's with that skeptical look? I'm not joshing you, pal. I screwed up an experiment and got combined with a Pokemon. So, how about it? Help me out here? No. No? No, don't be so cold. Come on, you gotta help me. Help a guy with in deep, deep trouble. What do you say, Chief? Please? Okay? Alright. Oh, I didn't know he actually forced you to do it if you said no. That's interesting. Wait until I get inside the teleporter. When I do, go to my PC and run the cell separation system. I know you can actually just, like, walk out on this dude and just leave him here, but you can't progress the game without doing without helping him, so might as well just do this. Cell separation. The teleporter's cell separator. Hey! There he is. Yeah! Thanks, bud. I owe you one. So did you come to see my Pokemon collection? You didn't? That's a bummer. I've got to thank you. Oh, here. Maybe this will do. And we get an SS ticket. If you remember that SSN that that one kid was talking about, might be useful. That cruise ship SSN is in Vermilion City. I hear there are lots of trainers on board, too. They invite me to their party, but I can't stand fancy dues. Why don't you go instead of me? Go on and have a good time. Uh, alright. We're probably going to be very confused seeing a 10-year-old kid instead of a Pokemaniac, but no oh well. But yeah, Bill is also the guy who created the PC system that we use for storage, so now that we know actually who he is, uh, the PCs, instead of saying someone's PC, will say Bill's PC, which is kind of nice. 
Anyway, we just run all the way back here. And hop that fence. Well, let's go heal real fast before we enter the gym. Did not mean to touch that sign. All right. Is it gym time? I think it's gym time. We're honestly at a pretty decent level. We're kind of over-leveled, honestly, for this, since it's only two Pokemon, but I think we'll be fine. Yo, champ of the making. Let me give you some advice. The leader, Misty, is a pro who uses water-type Pokemon. You can drain all their water with grass-type Pokemon. Or you might use electric-type Pokemon and zap them. Well, the only electric-type you could have gotten at this point is actually Pikachu, so if you got that, go, feel free to go ham. But yeah, if you never saw the anime, it's water-themed. We got a Bulbasaur. We'll be fine. If you got a Charmander, good luck. It's probably best to pick up an Oddish or a Bellsprout while you're around the area, since they're pretty useful for this gym. And they do evolve relatively early. I think both of them evolve around level 21 or so. But yeah, this is mostly just going to be free experience for Emperor, because grass type. And they do have a lot of water types we haven't seen before, but we're not going to be covering them here. We'll be covering them much later, I think. Alright, covering a shelter. I have been meaning to try and use a shelter in a playthrough, actually, but they're only Fire Red exclusive, so unfortunate. Maybe another time, another game, but not here. Ooh, Razor Leaf! There we go. This is slightly inaccurate compared to Vine Whip, which is 100% accuracy, but I believe that Razor Leaf is slightly stronger. Yeah, it's 55 versus 35, and does have a high critical hit ratio, so I'm going to take the risk and get rid of Vine Whip for now. I'm going to keep Tackle, though, because it's nice to have something that isn't just grass on Ivysaur for now. And we'll Razor Leaf. Defeated Swimmer Boy, Lewis. This can't be! Well, I'm sorry to say, bud, but it can be. And we just walk over this way. Technically speaking, this chick... You could just actually walk over here and talk to Misty to challenge her, but we're gonna fight her first. What? You? I'm more than good enough for you. Misty won't have to be bothered. Yeah, I doubt that. Picnicker Diana, you've only got one Pokemon. What makes you think you're gonna win? Yeah, it's level 19, but I have an Ivysaur. And it knows Razor Leaf. And as we all know, a fish's one true weakness is leaves. Dead. Not a big surprise. I haven't played TF2 in a long time, actually, now that I think about it. I don't know, I just sort of fell off it. I played it for a long time in, like, high school or so, and then I put it down. Just first-person shooters aren't normally my thing. But yeah, that's all of Cerulean Gym taken care of, except for the leader, Misty. But we've been going for a decent amount of time on my end. I know we'll probably cut down the encounters and such, but I think it's best that we stop here. So, of course, next time on Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red Leaf Green, we'll be taking out Misty and uh, heading down, hopefully, to Vermilion City to see what that SSN is all about. But until next time, ice out.